Hello, FGIC Internet World. If you're on and you want to give a little hello or a wave, Glad to see you here. Hi, Sister Shelley. How are you? Sister Terry, good to see you. Hi, Sister Gloria Levine. Sister Colette Gibbs, so nice to see you here. Sister Joanne, Sister Jackie. Hi, Sister Diane. Sister Irma, good evening to you. Brother Jerry, hello, hello. So nice to see you all here. Sister Dorita Fernandez, hello. <laughs> I love Sister Dora. Brother Ricky, ah, oh, Sister Carol. Good to see you, Sister Carol. Glad you could join us tonight. They were all laughing at me because, um, hi, Sister Mancini, how are you? Um, because I set up in the Sunday school, um, is this called the, the underwater room, the sea room? <laughs> I was like, I didn't know I was supposed to set up anywhere else. So we're in the kids' room tonight, so I guess we could act like kids, right? Does that sound good, guys? <laughs> hi, Sister Cheryl. Oh, Sister Dora, hearts. <laughs> sister Betty, hello, my dear sister. Fish room, thank you, fish room. It's the fish room. <laughs> That's right, Gloria. Gloria spent many a days in here. Brother Rafa. Oh, good to know that you're joining us, Brother Rafa. Sending lots of love. So I'm excited to be here. This is my first time um, doing the Sunday night um, minister doing live. And um, so I'm so excited to come on and do this. So Janice, 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 maybe Thornton, um, welcome to you, Sister Laura Parker. You've become a mom to our church. We love you. So happy that you're on. Brother Tony, awesome to see you. Say hello to mom, and um, just excited to know that you're joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Rafa. <laughs> I think Rafa knows me um, long enough to actually have the privilege of calling me Sister 80. <laughs> Although many of you do. <laughs> Going back to my little girl days. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? So I'm not sure where all of you are. I know a bunch of you are calling, are tuning in from Connecticut. I know and Tony's down in Florida. I'm not sure where Sister Laura Parker's uh, joining us from. Sister Donna, good to see you here. Um, but it, does everybody else be experiencing much warmer weather than normal for November, whatever, 6th, I think it is today? It's like September 6th out there, <laughs> which I guess is nice. You can wear short sleeves and stuff, but I'm okay with having a snowstorm next week. Oh, Shay, so good to see you, my dear. Love you. Sister Laura, you're calling for, you're coming in from Baltimore, Maryland. Awesome. Lorraine Bruckena Nelson. Howdy from the Nelsons. Good to have you joining us. Sister Chris, good evening. Yes, Sister Diane, an Indian summer. Um, I actually have a little bit of sweat on my chin. <laughs> it's so warm. <laughs> you might have the heat on already and no more AC turning on. Nope, none of that. <laughs> 
Sister Dora, we know. If you could just bring the sun inside the building, you would. <laughs> Sister Carmen, good to see you, my dear. Jessica Stevens, lots of love to you, too. Hi, Sister Carol. Sister Carol Burl, very nice. So, Janice, you're from Connecticut. Awesome. Good to meet you. Brother Mark Swaggerty, good evening, my friend. Awesome to have you joining us. Amen, Sister Donna. I hear you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Alyssa Cooper, hello from Bristol. Awesome. All the windows were open all day. Yes, me too. And even during this time, it's so strange. I left mine open all night last night and there wasn't even a chill in the air this morning. I was like, <sighs> I do love the fall crisp air. So that was nice. You have the AC on, Sister Dora? That's so funny. You love this warm weather, but your AC is on. <laughs> That's so funny. You're just dreaming that it will stay warm. So by faith, you're going to keep your AC going. <laughs> That's funny. Well, it's exciting to see you all here and have you join us. And if you are unfamiliar with who I am, my name is Sister Adrian. I have Adrian Lautenbach. Um, I have been attending this church since I was 20 days old. And um, that was many, many years ago. Um, hi, Sister Tracy O'Neill. Good to see you. And um, have had the privilege of being raised in this beautiful ministry and um, just having the experience of walking with Jesus, knowing that he's there, knowing who he is from a young age, <clears throat> and him proving himself over and over and over again to me through the years. Um, have I had some hard times? Absolutely. Have I had some heartaches? Sure. Some difficult times where I, my faith a little bit sometimes wavered. And, um, but God, he never did. He always showed up. He always proved himself to me and he picked me up and he dusted me off and he said, you got this. And that's going to be part of what my message is about tonight. So um, just wanted to give you an opportunity to find out who I am and uh, just a little bit. Um, I'm a mom of two wonderful kids. I have a 16 year old, 16 year, I almost forgot my, her, her age, a 16 year old daughter, junior in high school. Whew, that makes me feel old and an eight year old son. And he is full of energy, but they both just bring such joy to my life. And it's exciting watching Jesus, uh, begin to prove himself to them and brings me right back to those days as a child learning who Jesus is. And I just feel like the most privileged and blessed woman in the world. So so exciting to have you all with us tonight. And uh, before we jump into everything, just want to give you that reminder and that great thanks for all those who continue to support this ministry with your prayers and your giving. And um, if you're new to us and haven't yet had an opportunity to give into what this ministry is doing and accomplishing, you can be a part by going to fgichurch.org and clicking Give Now. And uh, your giving will be a part of helping to keep the lights on, keep the, the ministry going forth, blessing missions, uh, being an outreach to our community and around the world. And God will certainly bless you for being faithful to bless his kingdom. And um, so we just appreciate all that you do through your giving and through your prayers. And are just so grateful that God has sent you along our way. Uh, to be our viewing audience online. <laughs> so we're just excited to be together. Let's just uh, open in a word of prayer. God, we just are so grateful for who you are, God, and for all that you've done for us. And we just ask that your presence is here with us today as we just open your word and just share from your heart. Let souls be encouraged and lifted, God, just wherever they may find themselves today, God, may you speak to their heart in a special way. May they know that you see them, you hear them, and that you are going to make a way where there seems to be no way. For you are faithful to your word. We just love and praise you, worship and adore you, and are grateful that you are our king. We just love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I am going to start off with a scripture in Deuteronomy, <laughs> a couple of scriptures in Deuteronomy chapter 31. And we're going to read verses 6 and 8. And it says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, 
nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 8, and the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. It's like he needed to say it again. Like, don't forget, I just said it two scriptures before, but I don't want you to forget that I go before you. He will be with you. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. The end, amen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the scripture in itself is just a wonderful reminder that no matter where we may go, no matter what we may face, let us remember God goes before us. What does that mean? That means he knows. He knows what we're going to face. And some may say, well, that's not fair because he sees that there's going to be a struggle. Yep, he sees that there's going to be a struggle. But he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. And he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So, I know this is a familiar scripture and I feel bad that I don't have this reference because it's just coming into my mind right now. But he talks about how it rains on the just and the unjust. God, when we got saved, I know we've heard this a thousand times, when we gave our lives to Christ, he never promised us. There's a song that literally just popped in my head. He never promised us that the cross wouldn't be heavy. He didn't promise us that the road wouldn't be hard, that the path, the, the hill wouldn't be hard to climb. He never promised us any of that. He simply promised us that he would be with us. And he would never forsake us. And isn't that the greatest thing? Because I don't know about you. I've walked through some things where I didn't really have many people standing with me. Some of that was because I maybe didn't speak it. So some didn't know what I was going through. You know, sometimes we can sit there and point a finger that nobody came and said anything to me. But not everybody knows everything you're going through. And so sometimes we feel like we're walking it alone or we, nobody understands or nobody sees, but God understands and he sees and he knows what's coming, but he also knows what he's put inside of you. He also knows that he's made provision for it and we can grab a hold of that and take him by the hand because he's right there with us. He's right there with us. And so we're just so grateful, so grateful that he is with us. I have a bunch of scriptures that I wrote and I'm just making notes and trying to figure out where I'm going to put them all in. So let's, I'm going to turn to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No, is that the one that I just read? Nope. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. <clears throat> and this one says, <clears throat> There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, <clears throat> but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Didn't mean to completely jump from one thought of, you know, struggle, because sometimes our struggle isn't so much of a temptation. It's maybe a, a sickness or a family situation or a relationship issue. <clears throat> But sometimes it is temptations to give in to self or give in to ways that we know that are not pleasing to God. But he doesn't, he gives us the ability to rise above this. And he gives us a way of escape. He goes before us. He walks with us. And he is the way of escape. If we can take a moment in that situation when we begin to feel that temptation rise and we're making a decision and we just say, God, we just, just speak his name. Jesus, I need you. He'll be there. He'll be there just in time. He will. Hallelujah, Jesus. Second Thess Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. No, nope, wrong one. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. 
So his heart, if your heart remains faithful after him to when you're faced with a situation, when you're faced with a trial or circumstance that seems overwhelming or a temptation, as I mentioned, God and his great mercy, he can direct your heart into his love and into the patient waiting of Christ. What does that mean? The waiting of God, where are you bringing me? What are you going to do in this situation? When are you going to show up? And sometimes that requires patience. Oh, Lord Jesus. Sometimes that requires patience. I stumbled across this song, and um, I'll admit it was a song I shared with my mother's prayer group that um, we just had this past week. And I really just couldn't get it off my heart, and I felt that it would tie well into my thought today. And, um, I'm going to read the words to it and just, it kind of just goes along with us remembering that God is always there. It says, I've been a sinner. I've been a saint. This is called never been a moment. A little bit of both every single day. I've been lost, but somehow I've been found. There's been some pain, been some regret, been some moments I'll never forget. But when I look back from where I'm standing now, the chorus says, there's never been a moment I was not held inside your arms. And there's never been a day, my favorite line in this entire song, there's never been a day when you were not who you say you are. Jesus. This morning we sang a song that said, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, that is who you are. Who, who is he to you? Who has he said he will be to you? He will be your healer. He will be your deliverer, your savior, your comforter, your peace, your truth. The answer to it all. That is who you are. There's never been a day when you were not who you said you are. Dear Jesus, you're forever it doesn't matter what I'm walking through because no matter where I'm going, there's never been a moment that I was not loved by you. And I apologize if you hear my phone ringing. Um, just someone's messaging me and I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> you are forever. It doesn't matter what I'm walking through because no matter where I'm going, there's never been a moment that I was not loved by you. You've been the rock. You've been the peace. Always showing your good heart to me. My days are marked by grace I don't deserve. Oh, dear Lord. Some days I look back and I say, God, I, I just don't deserve your grace. Or I've gone through things and I've just been at that, that low moment where you're just like, you're fed up with yourself. <laughs> Maybe I'm being too honest. Has that, anyone ever been there where you're fed up with yourself and the struggle and sometimes you just like can never seem to quite get over that hump and you're like, but God doesn't, he doesn't look down and condemn. He doesn't look down and say, there you did it again. He says, I've loved you. You've been the rock. You've been the peace. Always showing your good heart to me. My days are marked by grace I don't deserve. You've been the price I could never pay. You've been the light that has led the way. No matter where I am, I'm sure that there's never been a moment I was not held inside your arms. And there's never been a day when you were not who you say you are. You're forever. And it doesn't matter what I'm walking through. Because no matter where I'm going, there's never been a moment that I am not loved by you. I just want you to know today that no matter what you're walking through, no matter what trial it is, maybe it's the lowest value you've ever faced. He's there with you. You are inside of his arms. He's holding you. Let him hold you. Feel his warmth, feel his love, trust his arms, and continually go to him. Don't rest in the sorrow of it, rest in the love of him. And let his love lift you. Beautiful song from my childhood. Love 
lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. His love is there to lift you. His love is there to hold you, to comfort you, to bring you the peace in the situations where your mind should be in a turmoil. But just by looking up to him and saying, God, I trust you. God, I come to you. God, I believe in you. Sometimes it's just that whisper, Jesus, that he's right there beside you. There's never been a moment that he doesn't see you. Even when we run away and we don't want him to see us. I've been there in my life journey. I ran and I tried to hide. Even while coming to church, I tried to hide. <laughs> I tried to hide where my heart was, was hurting and broken and confused and disappointed and Jesus understands it all. And if we can remember that, we know that he has that compassion to walk with us and to hold us. Hmm. And then Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, as a way to walk into his grace and his glory. And out of the depths of despair, perhaps, out of the struggles, out of the temptation, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So he's walking with us and he's he's never going to leave us and forsake us and he walks right beside us. And if we can continuously look to him and ask him, okay, God, today I wake and I thank you for another breath. God, be with me. Point my journey. God, in every decision I make, I want it to honor you. And no matter what chapter you are in your life, if you're the newest of Christians and you're just trying to learn him, talk with him, open up the scriptures, let him show you who he is and who he has made you to be and seek him out for his presence and his spirit to lead and to guide you. For those who have maybe been saved a while and they're so maybe stuck in, um, stuck in a place of familiarity. I've been there probably more times than I want to admit. I'm just like, I'm doing this. I've got it. Or this has just become routine. And I don't ever want to fall into a routine with Jesus. No different than if you have a, a, a relationship like me and my husband. that We just celebrated at the beginning of this year, 20 years together. It could get kind of old and stale if we let it. But... When we celebrated our 20th anniversary, I feel like I couldn't be more in love with this man. It was sitting across from him at dinner. I, I just began to look back over the years of what we've accomplished together and how we've grown together and the hard times, but the amazing times and the joy and the journey. And so those who've been walking with Jesus for a while, sometimes we just got to sit down and have dinner with him and just take a look back and say, happy anniversary, Jesus. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thanks for sticking through it with me through the hardest of times. Rejoicing with me in the victories. Lifting me up when I didn't think that I could make it. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's so easy to be overtaken by the discouragements and the struggles. Trust me, I know I I don't say that in judgment at all. I say it in understanding for sure. But I am ever so grateful that my days are marked by grace. Sometimes I just don't deserve. And that's because he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. I'm a, I love to sing. That did not sound beautiful, I know. <laughs> but oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life so that we may live. He walked that path. He lived his time on earth to make a way for you and I. And I know I'm not telling you anything new. 
but just reminding you that you're inside of his arms. He's got you. He's holding you. And if you're on the top of the mountain in a victorious way, could you find someone to put your arm around and say, you got this? Encourage them. Bring your, your light of joy and excitement to be their cheerleader to say, you got this. You can do it. You know, sometimes when we're in the hard time, we don't necessarily want someone coming along. And, but we need it. We really do. We really do. How many times, you know, I can go back in, in elementary days when you would do like relay races and stuff and you feel like you're like, you're just not making it and you're like, you're going to make your team fail and then everybody starts cheering for you and for some reason, somehow you find this inner strength to push through and then, whoa, oh, you make it through to the finish end. We can do the same for one another spiritually. I guess that's kind of what was in my heart today when I was coming here. It's just, let me be that cheerleader to say, he's got you. You can do this. My son's favorite scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I think where so many times we get it wrong is that we put so much on ourselves that we say, I've got to do this and I should be strong enough to do this. That's not what God said. He said he would be our strength. He would be our strength. So it's not in us, it's in him. So if we can just turn it over to Jesus, it's amazing. I know many of you who are on here know what I'm talking about. The moment you turned it over to Jesus and stop held, holding on to it yourself, all of a sudden things begin to fall into place. Or even if it didn't all of a sudden fall into place, all of a sudden you had peace. All of a sudden you could rest and then be able to see better what God was walking you through and bringing you through. And, you know, no matter what you walk through, let this prayer be in our heart. God, I don't understand why right now, but help me to see and help me to understand and help me to learn whatever it is that you need me to learn through this journey. And if we can keep our hearts humble and in tune with him to that level, then no matter what we go through, we can have joy in that journey. And then in the end, look for an opportunity to use that experience to help someone who has walked that path before. I cannot tell you the times we're watching my brothers and sisters' lives and having just a slight understanding maybe of some of the struggles that they've gone and how they stand in the house of God and lift their hands and worship him in spirit and in truth. It encourages my heart that says, Adrian, if that sister, that brother can stand here and give God their all and their praise and their worship, you better know that you can do the same. <laughs> Because he's always got us. You know, it does, it does require us giving of ourselves unto him. Psalm 37, 5 says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Trust is sometimes a hard thing to give, especially if our hearts have been broken and beaten down by man. And our trust in man has been shaken. And sometimes we can turn those issues of trust and also find it difficult to trust God. But I will be a testimony today to tell you there's never been a time where God, when I placed my trust in him, that he failed me. Never been a time. Never been a time. Put my trust in myself and I failed. Mm-hmm. That's a scary place to get. Don't ever get there. <laughs> That's a place of pride and the Lord will have no place for it. It's not in us. It's in him. You know, I just love him for that. He has made a way. He is walking with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So in that, we don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid. We can worship and praise him. We're in the hollow of his hand. I'm pulling out some oldies. 
some of my friends who've been around for a long time. I'm in the hollow of his hand. And I know my Lord is going to hold me, hold me, hold me in the hollow of his hand. Though I may not preach like Peter and I may not pray like Paul, I can tell the whole wide world that Jesus died for all. Because I'm in the hollow of his hand. He's got a pretty big hand. <laughs> and it fits all of us. You and I, we're together in that hand. Being held ever so gently. And ever so personally. It's Sometimes I can, if I, if I take too much time, which is, no, there's never too much time to think and ponder of Jesus. But the more that I do is what I mean to say. I'm just increasingly in awe of him. Because he's so personal to me. Like he knows me so much better than I even know myself. And sometimes I wish that the people around me understood me in the way that I feel like I sometimes need to be understood. But every time I go to Jesus, he, I never confuse him. <laughs> I may confuse the people around me. <laughs> I joke at myself a lot because sometimes I, I talk so much that I, because I'm trying to just get everything out. But Jesus understands that. Because he, he knows all things. God made me the way he made me. And therefore, he understands me. <laughs> And he made you the way he made you. And God understands you. He understands you. And he wants you to know that you are in his hands. He loves you. He formed you. And that he has made a way. He has gone before you and yet he's beside you. He's gone before you but he's wrapped his love around you. He knows what's coming. And he if you stay in his presence and in his spirit and you commit your way to him and you go to him and you say, I give my all to you, lead me, guide me, and you trust in him in that, he will bring you through victorious. And um, so, I don't know, I guess I could keep you here for hours and hours just talking about his love for us. But I hope in some small way, uh, just being reminded of being in his arms, being in his hands, and him going before thee and walking beside thee and never forsaking thee. If that bit of inspiration tonight just encourages you to keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Don't give up. You may be on that brink of that miracle you've been waiting for. Don't give up. There's others around you who have seen you stood, stand, and they're, they're believing with you. There's others believing with you that God's going to do it. And we know that he will. It's not always in our time. It's not always when we want it to be. But have we not learned that God's timing is always on time? And it is always best. It is always best. So, just want to let you all know that Jesus loves you. Could you say that to yourself today? Jesus loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more? Could he give? So love him to the moon and back. Love him with your everything. Love him in the morning. Love him in the noontime. Love him when you're getting ready to go to bed. Love him when you see that soul at the grocery store. You see that soul at the gas station. When you go through the corridors at work. Love Jesus by touching others and showing them that what you have inside of you is beautiful, is awesome, and it's the love of Jesus. 
So as we close out, we're going to just pray together. And if you've got prayer requests, you can say, please pray with me. Please know our church is standing with you in prayer. If you have a prayer request and want us to stand with you, please call 860-646-8731. We will join with you in prayer and faith believing because we know that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Because he is faithful. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just love you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you go before us. We thank you that you stand beside us. We thank you that we don't have to fear. That we can walk in faith and we can walk in peace and we can walk in hope. God, and that your grace is there, God, to, to guide us, God, and to cover us, Jesus. Jesus, we just ask that you go into the hearts of those who are just maybe at a low point today, God, and are just wondering, is it worth it at all? Is this life worth it, Jesus? God, speak to their hearts. Send your word to their spirit, God, to just remind them, I love you, my child. I love you, my child. God, and make a way where they can come to know your spirit, Jesus. God, we just thank you for your goodness. God, and for the bodies that are struggling with maybe an illness or a sickness today, God, we just ask for you to go in and bring a speedy recovery, Jesus. No matter what the ailment, God, be it a physical ailment, God, just a spiritual ailment, God, a, a, an ailment of the heart or the mind, Jesus, God, we just, we call out your name, God, for healing, for how your children need to be healed today. You know it. You know it, God. God, and we claim your promises that when we call upon your name, you will answer, Jesus. So, Jesus, we ask for you to just open up the windows of heaven and pour the beautiful answers of prayer out onto our brothers and our sisters today. Jesus, continue to lead us in your spirit and in your word. Continue to show us your goodness, God, and your faithfulness through our lives, God, so that others may see, God, and know that you are real. God, we just love you. We praise you. We adore you. We just thank you for all that you do in our lives, God, and that you are always who you said you would be. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. We just love you so much. Our pastor sends her greetings and her love. And we hope that the next church service we have in person, if you're able to be with us, we're going to hug your neck and love on you. And those days that you just need to be seated in your chair, we're going to hug you from afar and love you from afar. Oh, Sister Holly, nice to see you here. Sister Emily. Just so grateful that we're all together. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful week in the Lord. We hope to see you again on Wednesday night, either in service or online. Continue to just hear about how the body of Christ in that unity, that place of unity as Brother Dean ministers, um, just continues to strengthen our connection in the body. We just love it. And then, of course, again next Sunday. We hope to see you again. God bless you all. All our love, prayers. Have a fantastic week. Maybe we'll get some snow before next week. <laughs> love you all. God bless you.